Howdy, April Brickell. It's Miss Kosh. I am continuing to work through Mr. Passwater's notes. So thank you for all of those. Um, this is something that I've already started teaching or we're kind of in the middle of doing in my class, but we're gonna t I'm going to talk through this in case uh, y'all find this to be helpful. Okay, so the question is, are these two equations equivalent? And the answer is no, they are not. What happens here, this is saying sine of x equals one half. So we need a y value of one half, so that's here and here. And so we can have, it's any angle that's coterminal to this angle, um, or any angle that's coterminal to that angle, would be like, if they said find all, then we would say, okay, well, x equals pi over six, plus anything that's coterminal. So plus two pi k, where um, we like to write where k is an element of the integers, that kez is how we nickname that. Um, and also over here in this quadrant, that's five pi over six plus two pi k, and still kez, but sometimes I get lazy. Um, so there are infinitely many answers to this particular problem. Sometimes we'll also say find um, when, and this is badly written, but when x is between zero and two pi, and so you're like, okay, well, that's when x is equal to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay. Um, then, we, but with this is saying we have the inverse function of sine. We want to know when does, when do we have, what's our angle that gives us a ratio of 1 half that's within this, the world of inverse sine. So inverse sine, if you remember, lives between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And so the only time it's equal to 1 half, this x would equal pi over 6. So there is exactly one answer to this. Now, sure, it is one of these answers, but there's infinitely many solutions if you asked for find all, and there's two solutions if you asked to live between zero and two pi. Um, but there's exactly one when we're talking inverse sine. Okay, let's see. And the inner circle, okay, however, due to the domain restrictions, is that only, okay. As a result, we were solving equations using trig functions. We must modify our solutions to account for any domain restrictions or lack of domain restrictions. Okay. Um, since they're periodic. Oh, look, okay, he did all the stuff that we're going to do. <laughs> uh, this is that problem, and that's exactly what I had written down up here. Um, and then cosine would be one half, uh, would, would live, um, that's quadrant one is pi over three, quadrant um, four is five pi over three, and so it's those. Tangent has a slope of, um, uh, of one. Tangent is one on the pi over four family, and then when you can, so if you think about this one real fast, so we're here, is a slope of one. These are exactly pi apart. So I would allow my students to tell me x is equal to pi over four plus two pi k, and x is equal to five pi over four plus two pi k, but I think this answer is more sophisticated. So I like that answer better. That's what I would put in multiple choice when I write a problem. Um, I would not put these two because I'm lazy. That takes too long to type. <laughs> True story. Okay. Um, so find all the solutions to this. So here we are thinking through this cosine. Um, that is not a good circle, but whatever. We're here and here, which is the pi over four family. So x is equal to three pi over four plus two pi k. And then x is equal to five pi over four plus two pi k. Technically, you should always describe, define k since you introduced it, but okay. Um, find all solutions. So when sine is equal to zero, sine is the y value, that's negative one. And so this is three pi over two plus two pi k. Kez is implied. Oh, he wrote it this way. I always call this root three over three. I multiply by a funky form of one. Um, this is the less steep one. And so this is pi over six. And then we can go um, plus pi k because it's going to be here and then here. Super. Okay, solving the trigon trigonometric equations. Isolate the trig function, find the corresponding angle measure, consider any domain restrictions, write the solutions, and or general solutions. Very good. Um, so we have to isolate sine, so we're going to divide both sides by 6. I have sine of theta equals, well, 3 over 6. It gives me root 2 over 2. So this is the pi over 4 family, and we're in these quadrants. Um, what are all values? Okay, so here's what I was, I didn't catch it immediately. But so all values, it's pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And it's 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. Okay. Um, F and G, what the coordinates of the point where they intersect between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so let's set them equal. Subtract 3. Divide by 2. 
Where is cosine? Cosine's the x, negative one half is here and here. Um, and they just want us to live between, we get one time around the circle and that's it. So x would equal two pi over three and four pi over three. Notice I'm assuming that you're really good with the unit circle. So if you're not, go practice it, okay? Because these should come just as fast as what you're seeing me do. I'm good, but that should be natural for all of us. Okay, <laughs> true story. Um, okay, whenever we want, when we want to square trinomial, try trigonometric functions. Oh my goodness, not trinomial. Uh, or raise them to the next, we do not want our notation to be overly complicated. Um, if we want to square the variable, we simply write x squared. I don't know that I have ever bothered to square, like, I don't know. In the 24 years I've been teaching high school math, I have never wanted to take x, an angle x, square it, and then take the sign of that value. So this, now maybe we would want to do it at some point, but I can't think of any time in my IB world or in my AP world or my honors pre -cal world, we just don't write that. Um, but trig functions can create a bit of an issue. We want to separate this expression. Okay, so basically, I didn't read everything he wrote, but I'm sure it's good. Um, if I want to take sine of x, so I have an angle x, I want to take its sine value, and then I want to take that ratio and raise it to a power, we as mathematicians are inherently lazy, I mean efficient. We aren't going to write this with the parentheses, we're going to turn it into just sine to the n power of x. So we would say something sine squared x, we might see sine to the fourth x, something like that. Okay, um, so we now see, we're finding the zeros, so I have... Um, 3 minus 4 sine squared x equals 0. I'm going to subtract 3, divide by negative 4, and I get sine squared x is equal to positive 3 fourths because it was a negative divided by a negative. And now we do the cheer. Square root, square root, plus minus. Go back and watch my previous video if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about. And so I have sine of x is equal to root 3 over 2. And so now where does that happen? Sine is the y value, root 3 over 2 is the larger ones. And so we have all of these, and so they just, well, that's, anyway, pretend I can draw. I'm living between 0 and 2 pi, so what are my answers? It's, um, it's 1 pi, I was about to write 2 pi over 3, but I was going to put them in order. 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, so 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3. I think this is fun. I hope y'all are enjoying this as much as I do. Trig is my favorite. Okay, what are the values? Oh, okay, now here is, my kids have already done this um, on the test and the retest, and anyway, they keep making the same mistake, and they like to, like, just divide, and then one of the cosines disappears. Wrong. Don't do that. Um, we can, if you divide away a variable, you lose answers, except in the polar world, but we're not there yet. Okay, so cosine squared theta plus cosine theta would equal zero, and now in both terms I have a cosine. So I can factor that out, and I'm left with cosine theta plus one, and now I can say, okay, cosine theta equals zero, or cosine theta equals negative one. If you want to, you could do a u substitution. You could let u, not me, equal cosine theta, and then I have u squared plus u equals zero, and I can solve that equation. Um, this one, I just didn't really feel like I needed to because it wasn't very hard. Um, okay, so cosine is the x value equals zero here and here, and cosine equals negative one over here, and they wanted us to live between zero and two pi, so we have pi over two, we have pi, and we have three pi over two, and that was fun. Okay, um, how are we doing? Let's see. Example eight. Oh, and then example eight finishes this part, so we'll do that, and then I will start a new video. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, we want to find um, the intersection, so 2 sine squared x equals root 3 sine x. I need to set everybody equal to 0. I can factor out a sine, and I have sine of x times 2 sine of x minus root 3. You could do a u substitution, just like we talked about. Once again, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, it, don't let me stop you, but I didn't feel that I had to do this. Um, add root 3, divide by 2. Okay, so where is sine equal to 0? Sine is my y value, so it's here and here. Where is sine equal to root 3 over 2? That's here and here. And we want to live between 0. They're not letting us equal 2 pi. Notice that? So we're going to say, but we can't equal 0. So we'll say that x is equal to 0. It's equal to pi over 3. It's equal to 2 pi over 3. It's equal to pi. And they're saying, don't let it. It could equal 2 pi, but they, they restrict, they remove that from the world we live in, if that makes sense. All right. Go study. Subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll see you later.